Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Brian, for that introduction. Before I begin, I want to offer my thoughts and prayers to the family and friends of Mayor Miles Murdoch, who passed away last week after a brave battle with cancer, and it's a terrible loss. My thoughts and prayers are with his loved ones and the entire community of Godrich during this difficult time. I want to acknowledge Lieutenant Governor Elizabeth Dodswell. I want to thank her for serving our province for the last nine years. She's been an incredible leader, and I will miss her tremendously in her role. Thank you, Your Honor. As well as our host mayor, Josh Morgan. Josh, thank you for hosting us today. Friends, it's great to be back here in the wonderful city of London, alongside my caucus and cabinet colleagues for the 2023 AMO Conference. And I wanna give a big thank you to Colin, Trevor, the entire board of directors and everyone at AMO for inviting me to speak today. It's my sixth time speaking at this conference. And as I've said before, this event is one of the highlights of my year. It's always a privilege to join you to talk, on, talk only about the challenges we're facing every single day and all 443 municipalities face every single day, but also the great progress we're making together to grow and build Ontario. And friends, Ontario is growing at an unprecedented pace. Last year alone, our population grew by more than 500,000 people. At this rate, Ontario will add at minimum 5 million more people in the next 10 years. That's like adding two new cities nearly the size of Toronto in a decade. Ontario is now the fastest growing jurisdiction in all of North America, bar none. We're growing faster than both Texas and Florida, the two fastest growing states south of the border. Hundreds of thousands of families are coming to Ontario from other parts of Canada and from all around the world for a better life and for better opportunities. Because there's no better place in the world to call home, to start a business, to start a family than here in Ontario. <laughs> We're seeing new businesses set up shop, and these are pretty staggering numbers. Over 85,000 new businesses registered in Ontario just last year. We're attracting billions of dollars in new investments and new jobs across all sectors in all regions of the province. And I have to tell you, as Premier, nothing brings me more joy than joining you and your communities to welcome new investments another factory or a new shift, another production facility or a state-of-the-art manufacturing lab. In April, I joined my good friend, I call him Mayor Barry, the great mayor of Kitchener and Mayor McCabe to break ground on the University of Waterloo and City of Kitchener's Innovation Arena for health science startups. In May, I was thrilled to join Mayor Leggett to celebrate Moderna's major investment to make vaccines in Cambridge. And I'll never forget last year, standing shoulder to shoulder with Mayor Dilkins to celebrate Canada's first large scale electric vehicle battery plant in Windsor. Or, or this past spring in St. Thomas, alongside Mayor Preston, better known as Mayor Yes, Let's Get It Done, to, <laughs> to announce that Volkswagen was following suit with their first overseas gigafactory. And friends, I just want to take a moment to talk about our growing auto sector. Working with great mayors like Drew and Joe, our Indigenous labor and business partners, we're building a homegrown electric vehicle supply chain that's going to benefit every community in this province for generations to come. 
We're connecting critical minerals in Northern Ontario and clean steel makers in Hamilton and Sault Ste. Marie to automakers and battery manufacturers across Ontario. Over the past two and a half years, we've attracted over $25 billion in auto and EV battery investments. And today, Ontario is the only jurisdiction, not only in North America, but the entire world, where the world's six largest auto makers have set up shop. These, and thanks to each and every one of you. These investments, they're spurring further growth across all regions of the province and across our manufacturing sectors. In fact, last month alone, Ontario added more than 7,800 manufacturing jobs to our economy. That's more new manufacturing jobs than all 50 U.S. states combined. Ontario's manufacturing sector now employs over 820,000 people, the highest it's been in decades. That's, that's 820,000 workers with good, stable employment. That's 820,000 workers who are proud of what they're making right here in Ontario. And across all sectors, 700,000 more people are working today than when we took office in 2018. We are an economic powerhouse, not just in North America, but across the world with a GDP of over $1 trillion. Trends, friends, our economy grows. As our population grows, we need to make sure our infrastructure keeps up. That's why across Ontario, we've embarked on the most ambitious capital plan in our province's history. We're investing over $184 billion over the next 10 years, of which 50 billion is going to support more than 50 new hospital projects across Ontario. We're investing 28 billion in roads and highways and more than 70 billion in transit as we build the largest transit expansion in North America. Shovels are in the ground to build the new Ontario line. Work is underway on a bridge crossing over the future Bradford Bypass. We're building the new Highway 413 stretching across Halton, Peel and York regions. In Windsor, we're widening and expanding Highway 3 from two to four lanes between Essex and Leamington and building a new interchange to connect Highway 401 to Lausanne Parkway. And we're finally building Highway 7 between Kitchener and Guelph. We've, <laughs> we've purchased three new train sets as part of our plan to bring back the Northlander, connecting Timmins and Cochrane with Toronto. And we recently approved the terms of reference for the First Nations-led environmental assessment to finally build all season roads to the Ring of Fire. But, but at a time when it's never been more important to deliver infrastructure for our growing province, we need to do everything possible to deliver on our commitment to build Ontario. We need to get it done. It shouldn't take 15 years to open a mind. It shouldn't take decades to build roads to the Ring of Fire. It shouldn't take years to get approval to build homes for growing communities. Together, we have to ensure that Ontario is a place where our shared potential is limited only by the scale of our ambitions. Together, we have to ensure that Ontario is a place where we can do and build big things. Of course, we can't talk about building without talking about homes. As everyone in this room knows, we're in the midst of a housing crisis, the likes of which we've never seen. I hear it everywhere I go. People are struggling, struggling with affordability, with the rising cost of buying a home, with high rents, this struggle is being felt most by young people and newcomers who are priced out of the dream of home ownership. This 
is status quo we can't accept. That's why it's so important that we work together to build at minimum 1.5 million homes by 2031. <laughs> Failing to act would worsen the housing supply affordability crisis. Failing to act would hurt everyone in Ontario by driving up the cost of goods and services and by hampering new job creation and investments. Failing to act would threaten to erode Canadians' unwavering support for immigration at a time when our economic success depends on welcoming skilled newcomers to fill critical labour gaps. As Canada and Ontario welcome more people, we need to build more homes of all types. To do so, our government is the first in decades to have a real plan to build more homes. Our Housing Supply Action Plan has set ambitious targets for growing cities and municipalities. It has cut costly red tape while reducing municipal fees and taxes on purpose-built rentals as well as affordable and attainable housing. Through our transit-oriented communities, we're planning for density right next to transit. We're unlocking lands to build more than 150 homes and residents for 150,000 people. That's the same as adding a city the size of Guelph or Milton or St. Catharines. And after decades of stagnation, we're starting to see results against challenging headwinds like higher inflation rates and labor shortages. In 2021 and 2022, we had the most housing starts in over 30 years. This is positive momentum and a step in the right direction. But as our province grows at an incredible speed, we need to do more. And friends, we're doing more. When it comes to building more homes, we need to work together. The federal government, the provincial government, and municipal governments all have a role to play. One of the most important things we can do as the provincial government is support municipalities in reaching your housing targets. So today, I'm pleased to announce the Building Faster Fund. This new fund is an incentive program that supports municipalities to build more homes. It's a three-year $1.2 billion program that will reward municipalities for reaching annual housing targets. These targets will be ambitious but realistic. For the first year of the program in 2023, we want to achieve at least 110,000 new housing starts. It would be the first time in over three decades that Ontario surpassed the 100,000 threshold. From there, we'll ramp up over time until we're on track to build at least 1.5 million homes. Municipalities that reach 80% of their target each year will become eligible for funding based on their share of overall goal of 1.5 million homes. Municipalities that fail to reach at least 80% won't be eligible. But here's the best part. Municipalities that exceed their target, that do better than 100%, get a bonus. Let me take a moment to demonstrate with a few choice examples. Let's take Pickering, one of Ontario's best performers right now, and I want to congratulate Mayor Ash and his council for everything you're doing to get homes built. At Pickering's current pace of building, they're on track to exceed provincial targets by over 150%. If these numbers hold, Pickering could be eligible for over $5 million in new funding. Or let's take Vaughn, another top performer right now, and congratulations to Mayor Del Duca and his council as well. At Vaughn's current pace of building homes, they're on track to exceed provincial targets by a whopping 140%. Again, if these numbers hold, Vaughn will be eligible for $17 million in new funding. And the leader of the pack, Brantford, at Brantford's current pace of building homes, 
They're on track to hit 176% of their target and would be eligible to receive $4 million additional dollars. So congratulations, Mayor Davis and his council. These are incredible sums of money that will reward municipalities for building homes and help pay for important infrastructure and community building projects. The Building Faster Fund will start flowing in 2024 and be put towards infrastructure like site servicing, roads and public utilities and other shovel-ready projects that support the goal of building homes and community buildings. Over the coming weeks, the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing will be consulting with AMO on further defining what's eligible. And I want to reassure our small, rural and remote municipalities who don't have a housing target, 10% of the program dollars, $120 million, will be set aside to support housing in your communities. And to ensure more municipalities are eligible for the Building Faster Fund, we need more municipalities to have housing pledges. So today, I'm also announcing that we're extending strong mayor powers to another 21 municipalities that commit to provincial housing targets, specifically municipalities projected to have populations of over 50,000 people by 2031 will become eligible for strong mayor powers and building faster fund. So as long as the heads of council provide written confirmation to the province that they pledge to meet their housing targets. I want to be clear, these municipalities will be no longer be required to provide a council endorsed housing pledge. And that's because we want more municipalities to be eligible for the building faster fund sooner. That said, we hope and expect mayors and other heads of council will work with their colleagues to ensure a council endorsed pledge to demonstrate their shared commitment to building. Together, the Building Faster Fund and Stronger Mayor Powers are providing municipalities with powerful new tools to build homes and to build them faster. As you build more homes faster, we know that you need to service those homes. These homes and need roads, they need water and other infrastructure. It all requires significant investment. That's why our government, led by Minister Surma, has for months been urging the federal government to renew and expand the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program. While, while we remain hopeful they will follow through on recent commitments for new funding this fall, Ontario was preparing to move forward with our own program to provide more support to municipalities, and that is coming very soon. Because we know you need resources now to help win the fight against the housing crisis. Friends, we have two choices here. We can sit back and ignore the crisis and pretend there is no crisis, or we can build more homes. Our government is choosing to build more homes. We're choosing to build the roads, highways, transit, hospitals, schools, and other critical infrastructure our growing province needs. We're choosing to work together with all of you to build Ontario. I want to thank you again for inviting me here today, and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you so much. Thank you.